It's time for Wave 3 Listens Live. Taking your calls to hear what you have to say on Kentucky and his first live local TV talk show. And hitting the streets to be live on location in your community. All hosted by Cindy Sullivan. This is Wave 3 Listens Live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wave 3 Listens Live. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, my goodness, it's Tuesday, and it's not raining, and I am a happy <laughs> camper, and I hope you are, too. We have a great show planned for you today. We're going to let you know about an upcoming event, Dining Out for Life. It's very important, and it's a win, 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 win situation. And we've got one of our special Facebook specials for you, so we're going to tell you about that as we go through the hour. And we're also going to help you out if you have been in an accident. Michael Schaefer is joining us today. He is an attorney here in Louisville, and he will be taking your calls if you've got questions we've got answers 571-5263 is our telephone number or 888-800-9283 is a toll-free number and Michael has been on the show before and we've talked about things that you need to make sure that you do or don't do if you are involved in an accident and we're going to talk about some of those those common questions that people have today right and people always have questions I, I actually had this come up last night Cindy my uh, daughter was on her way to work last night. She works late shift and she stopped at the Kentucky Fried Chicken to go through the drive through and mm -hmm. she's waiting to get her food food handed to her and the truck that had pulled out decided, I don't know whether his order wasn't right, and put it in reverse and slammed right into the front of her car. So, oh no! So uh, luckily uh, she's a little bit stiff. I don't think she's going to be hurt real bad but you know she called, Dad what do I do? And mm -hmm. uh, she t I told her, Take a picture of the license plate on the car that hit hit you. Okay. Take a picture of the cars as they're sitting there because if you're in a parking lot, the police won't come. So you're oh, have to doc right. you have to document everything yourself. Okay. And um, I also said get the insurance card and the driver's license number. And the reason to get all of those is because in this particular case, the insurance card that was given her, I called the insurance company to this morning and there was no insurance under this guy's name. <gasps> so we have the information to be able to track him down. If, with the uh, driver's license with number. With the driver's license and the license plate number. So very important that you just don't rely on that insurance card because if you stop paying on it, the yeah. address may be wrong and there might, might not be enough contact information to be able to track down who that person is because there's a lot of John Smiths out there. Sure, absolutely. And you know, that came up, um, I think the last time that you were on, because we were talking about in a parking lot, it's so interesting because the police don't come and do an accident report if it's in a parking lot. That's correct. If it's on private property, it's pretty much up to you. You need to document, you need to make sure that you uh, get the witness names mm -hmm. and addresses and phone numbers so they mm -hmm. can be contacted later. And then you have to get a civilian collision report from Frankfurt and fill out the information. The both sides or both people that are, that are involved in the accident will fill that out and put their version of what happened on on it. So, okay. in uh, in this particular case, luckily the uh, we we got a text from uh, this person later on saying that uh, I'm the moron that backed into you this morning. Oh. So there's not going to be an issue on whose fault it is, but uh, uh, and it looks like he's going to be up forthright about providing new insurance information, but you just never know what's going to happen in these situations. And if you have the uh, mind at the time and you're not putting yourself in danger, it's always very important to try to uh, document and get as much of that information and pictures uh, and witness names as you possibly can. Okay. And that is an interesting point. We, you know, now with cell phones the way that they are and being able to take those photographs, you know, with a lot of people anyway, that that's one of the things that's kind of a plus about the new technology. That's, a, that's, that actually, that's absolutely it. it. Used to be, I would uh, tell people to keep a uh, disposable camera always in their glove compartment uh, just okay. in case something okay. happened. But is there a phone out there now that doesn't have a, a camera on it? Well, yeah, if there is, yeah. I'm not aware of. Some it. of them are better than others, but that's, you're right. <laughs> well, it, but as long as you can see what happens, sure. it takes sure. care of it. It's just like the uh, security cameras uh, in a grocery store very uh, you know the 
the footage isn't very clear, right. but it's clear enough to show what gotcha. happens, and that's gotcha. what you need to do is just gotcha. document what happened. Well, speaking of keeping things in your glove box, Mike Schaefer has a glove box accident guide, too, that he uh, will pass along to you free if you are watching Wave 3 Listens Live. A absolutely. You can uh, go to uh, one of my websites, KentuckyAccidentBooks.com, and there is a form to fill out. And I'll be more than glad to uh, send you uh, one free of charge. Uh, just uh, put in your name and address, and we'll uh, get it in the mail to you today. Okay, fourteen ninety-five value just because you're watching Wave Three Listens Live. How about that? So, we, and Michael is an accomplished author. He has other books, and you'll see all of those books on that website. Absolutely. Well. Okay. All right, we've got a couple of callers on the line already. We'll go ahead and get to those. Uh, calls. If you've got a question for Michael, go ahead and give us a call right now, 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. Andrew, you're up first this morning. Morning, Andrew. Hey, Andrew, you with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Um, I had a uh, slip and a fall uh, in a little standing pool of water at a major retailer here in town, and there's just, uh, you know, I need to get to the doctor. I don't have health insurance. Um, I've had three prior back surgeries, and I felt something pop in my back when I fell, and you know, I've, I've filled out an incident report with uh, them there, and since then I've just not gotten any cooperation from them as far as uh, helping me get to the doctor and get that paid for because, you know, I feel they're completely negligent there. Well, you're kind of in a, uh, a tough position there, Andrew, since you don't have health insurance. What you have to hope for, really, you have two options. First, you need to contact the store and ask them if they have what is called MedPay insurance. If they had have med pay most the store will have five thousand dollars worth of benefits to go to pay your medical bills which will take care of your problem about getting to the doctor now if they don't have med pay uh, there's nothing to do to force that uh, those medical bills to be paid immediately you'll have to find a doctor that is willing to take your uh, to see you on what's called a lien where you would sign a promise to pay at a later date and a lot of doctors will do that if you have an attorney involved. Uh, if you would like, give us a call later on today at the office, and I'll talk about the details of what happened to see if liability is clear and see if we can help you out and get you into a doctor that can see you today. Wow, that's super. I did, had no idea that a doctor would do that. Uh, the, there are some. Not all of them do. Okay. A lot of doctors don't even understand um, auto accident insurance and how uh, PIP works, which uh, is automatic payment to those doctors, which okay. is um, kind of rare in this day and age because if you have, if a doctor submits a bill through the, the car insurance and their bill is $100, most of the time they're going to be paid $100. Now, if you submit it through your health insurance, <laughs> you've all seen the reduction. Like get 59 cents. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations with med pay, okay. with an accident or a car accident the doctors will get 100%, which uh, gives them some motivation to see you, even though they have to rely on that promise to pay. Right. Wait. Okay. All right. Well, Andrew, best of luck to you. Thanks so much for the call. We do appreciate it. We've got wide open lines. If you've got a question for Michael Schaefer, 571-5263 is our telephone number. The Schaefer Law Office is located at South 7th Street, Suite 200. The telephone number there is 584-9511 if you'd like to go ahead and make an appointment to see Michael Schaefer. Or you can go to the 800 number, which is an 855 number for you are heard, or go online, MikeShaferLaw.com. We're going to go ahead and take a real quick break. When we come back, we'll get to your calls, 571-5263. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Lucy 5. Welcome back to Way 3 Listens Live. Mike Schaefer is joining us today from the Schaefer Law Office. If you've been involved in an accident and you've got questions, 571-5263 is our telephone number. One of the other common questions that people ask when they're involved in a, in a traffic accident after you, is, is, how do I get my car fixed? Who's going to take care of that for me? Well, you know, under those circumstances, what you want to do is you have, you have several options. One okay. is to uh, the insurance company of the car that hit you is the number one if the accident was not your fault. You'll want to call that insurance company and get someone out to take care of that. When they do that, you can, um, they will, um, you know, you don't have to pay your deductible. You don't have to, um, you know, worry about rental car. Now, there are times when fault may be uh, at issue and they have to talk to, the at fault would have to talk to their insured to make sure the facts are in order. And that can take, believe it or not, a week, 
10 days okay. sometimes, just depending on how much investigation they have to do and how complicated those facts are. If that happens, then you'll want to run it through your own uh, car insurance company. You'll have to pay your deductible, and then that deductible would be reimbursed by the at-fault insurance company. Okay. And one really bad situation which happens more and more these days is what happens if uh, the person didn't have insurance, right. in, in which case uh, a no insurance charge would either be taken out by the police or you would uh, file a warrant for no insurance. You would uh, have the car repaired through your insurance company and then the court, if they convict this person of having no insurance, would uh, order restitution of your deductible and you may or may not get that. Most people, if they don't have insurance, it's really hard to get a lump sum payment. It's usually right. paid in 50 or $100 increments, but those, that's the only way you can get it paid in those circumstances. Okay, all right, thanks, Mike. We'll, we'll go ahead and get to a few phone calls. We're gonna talk to Vicki first. Hey, Vicki, do you have a question for Michael? Yes. Okay. Good morning, Vicki. Hi, uh, could you tell me what a uh, order dismissing for lack of prosecution is? What? I have a letter that says it was dismissed without Prejudice for okay. Are you the uh, were you the plaintiff or the injured party, Vicky? I'm the plaintiff. Okay. What that means is that you have not uh, prosecuted that case. Normally, for a year, there's been no action, so you haven't taken depositions, filed interrogatories, moved for a trial date, and the court has taken upon themselves because there has been no uh, activity in the case to dismiss it without prejudice. Now you can refile the case, in which case you'll have to pay another filing charge as long as the statute of limitations hasn't run, or if it's been within 10 days of the order being entered, you can make a motion for reconsideration of that, and that's what I would do. If, uh, if it's you, if you have an attorney, I would get on the phone with your attorney immediately to see what's going on in reference to that. Thanks so much for the call, Vicki. We appreciate it. We'll go to Lisa now. Lisa is calling from PRP. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Good morning, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing fine. Michael, um, I would like to ask a question about an auto accident. Recently, we, uh, my mom and I was involved in an accident. The guy hit us in the back. Uh, it was on the public street. The police was called. He admitted to the accident because he was on the phone in a conversation with his girlfriend, so he wasn't able to stop, so he had to hit us in the back because he wasn't paying attention. Well, all the right. police took down, you know, all the information and everything. Well, we found out later on down the road that the guy had insurance, but not on the car that he was driving. So that prevented us from having, couldn't really do anything to him because well. he didn't have insurance on the car that he had, so. Okay, well, uh, if, uh, you know, if he had insurance on another car, you'll wanna ha take a look at that policy, get a copy of that full policy, and see what the provisions are on that insurance policy. A lot of times, an insurance will, your car insurance will cover any car that you're driving, just like if you uh, went on vacation and rented a car, your own personal car insurance in most situations will cover your rental car under the same circumstances with the same deductible. So you'll want to look at that. You'll, if he doesn't have insurance, yet, the next step is to see whether you have something called uninsured motorist coverage. Uninsured motorist coverage takes the place of the at-fault party. It's insurance that you have to protect yourself in case the person that causes the accident did not have insurance. So uh, check your policy and see if, uh, if that's the case. And then a final Thing that you can do is an asset check on this individual to see if he has sufficient assets as far as bank accounts, uh, boat, you know, a house, those sort of things that you, if you sue him, you can attach those items to uh, get the money from any judgment. But those would be your options in this situation. Hey, Lisa, best of luck to you. Thank you so much for the call. We appreciate it. So can anybody do one of those investigations, an asset? Uh, it's really easy now uh, <coughs> because of the Internet. Uh, mm -hmm. You can Google a lot of that information. Uh, there's companies that we use to uh, do those checks, and, you know, any, anybody can request it. Uh, there is certain information that you can't get, but you can get bank accounts, amount of uh, money in, uh, that's in a bank account, house, equity in the house. Seriously? Seriously. 
So uh, kind of seems like that's really private information. Well, and it's just out there. <laughs> it's just it's just out there. I mean, uh, on the internet, you know, bank accounts, that sort of thing, you cannot get. But these companies can uh, track it down. So uh, that's why we pay the professionals to do it okay. for us. All righty. Okay, we've got Terry on the line, but we've got open lines. If you've got a question for Michael Schaefer, if you've been involved in an accident, have a question about insurance, that sort of thing, go ahead and give us a call right now, 571-5263. We'll take a real quick break, and when we come back, we'll get right to your call. So stay with us. Welcome back to Wave 3 Linces Live. Um, Michael Schaefer is in our studio today taking your calls. He is a lawyer, and if you have been injured, he may be able to help you today. 571 5263 if you've got questions, 888 800 9283. And we're going to go to the phones and talk to Tanya. Tanya, did you have a question? Morning, Tanya. Hello. What can we do for you today? Um, I was uh, hurt on a TARC bus uh, uh, back in uh, July. Okay. And um, I have tried to get help from uh, uh, several lawyers, and uh, I haven't been able to get any help because I didn't uh, uh, make out a police report because it's not the first thing I think of. When I get hurt, the first thing I do is go seek medical help. Right, and that's... Because uh -huh. uh, I was hurt bad for as, uh, for as the way I felt because since then, even though I didn't have broken bones, and I was the only one that got hurt, I'm still suffering behind it. The pain still comes and goes, and I'm still get. and I got medical bills, and uh, they have to be paid. Well, and we, I have to wind up paying them, even though, and I still have to ride the tarp because I don't have uh, a car. Well, we can, uh, we should be able to help you with the medical bills. Um, one, did you know anybody else that was on the tarp with you? Huh? Did you know any of the other passengers on the No, tarp? I didn't. Right. No, I, I was riding it by myself there for, I mean, normally I had a friend I used to ride with, but I didn't ride with her well, because uh, she wasn't uh, around available that day. And, okay. Um, well, Tanya, I, what, what, we can do for, what we can do is make an application to the Kentucky Assigned Claims Plan to get your medical bills paid. The Kentucky Assigned Claim Plan is uh, set up in Kentucky where all the insurance companies that write business in Kentucky are part of it. And if you're a passenger on a TARC and don't have your own car insurance, uh, you apply and one of those companies will act as your car insurance carrier and pay your first $10,000 of medical bills. So an application can be made to, uh, to them to get those medical bills paid if you haven't done that already. You want to call my office later today we'll talk to you about what needs to be done to do that and take a look at what happened in this particular case to see if uh, if we can help you out any further with that but it's a tough position to be in that's for sure tanya thank you so much for the call and best of luck to you we're going to go ahead and talk to kevin now calling from louisville hey kevin hey morning morning how kevin. you doing okay all right i've got uh workers comp on the job injury <clears throat> been doing procedures like I'm supposed to, head surgery, rotator cuff, and I'm just wondering if I'll never be 100% on that shoulder again. Will, do I need to get a lawyer to do any collect on anything? Well, you may or may not. I would, I would uh, talk to a lawyer in reference to it for sure, Kevin. Uh, what it's going to depend on is what the doctors put on you as far as a permanent total disability. Everything in reference to payments on workers comp is uh, based on uh, charts, you know, on whether, you know, wh where the injury is, what type of job you have, etc. So I would talk to a, to a lawyer, uh, give us a call where we can take a look at that and see exactly what, uh, what process you're in. Sometimes they'll go ahead and pay and make a reasonable offer and sometimes they won't, but I would I would talk to an attorney just to see what's going on. Most attorneys will give you a free consultation, uh, and then you can make a decision on whether or not to hire an attorney for this issue. Okay. 
All right, Kevin, thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and take a really quick break right now. Mike Schaefer is in the studio today. If you've got a question about um, being in an accident, picking up your insurance, that sort of thing, 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. When we come back, we're going to talk about dining out for life. It's a benefit for House of Ruth. And yum, yum. Got some Woodford over there. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Michael Schaefer is our guest today, and his office is located at 440 South 7th Street, Suite 200. And the telephone number there is 584-9511. The 800 number is an 855 number if you want to jot it down. For you are hurt. Those are letters, you are hurt. And the website is MikeSchaeferLaw.com. And if you've got a question for Mr. Schaefer, you can go ahead and give us a call right now. Our telephone number is 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. And tell me the name of the website again where you can get the books about, you go, that you've written. If you go to KentuckyAccidentBooks.com, uh, you can log in. There's a free, uh, there's a order blank on there and just okay. uh, send, uh, send, hit, click the button and we'll get your book out in the mail uh, okay. today. So um, what you don't know about buying car insurance can hurt you and wrongful death in Kentucky and seven potholes, I love this one, seven potholes that can wreck your Kentucky accident case. Yes, those are all, all available on the website and um, there is descriptions of those books. Uh, I have one other book um, on the site that you uh, can order and uh, just by uh, You'll look, it's a book on the grieving process that my wife wrote, Yuli Schaefer. She used to be a victim advocate with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Oh. And uh, kind of, it's, uh, it's called Am I Supposed to Feel Like This? And it uh, lets you know uh, what you're going through if you suffered the loss of, uh, say, someone in a wrongful death or a murder, or loss of a parent, even by natural man means. So okay. then uh, that also is available there for for the listeners today. Okay, and of course, if you um, uh, just say that you watched Way Three Listens Live, you can get this a complimentary copy of copy of the Glove Box Accident Guide that you can keep in your glove box so that you know exactly what you need to do. First of all, stay calm. Second of all, don't apologize. Third, contact the police. Absolutely. <laughs> Good ways to start. And if you've got a question for Mr. Shaver, five seven one fifty two sixty three, we've got Anne on the line. Anne is calling from Louisville. Hey, Anne. Anne, you with me? Yes, I am. Okay, what's your question? Well, I was in, uh, involved in an accident two weeks ago today. I was rear-ended by a young man, and I just wondered, do I need the police report for my own protection to know what was said? Uh, that police report will be available um, whenever you want it. They, they're, they're there. You can actually go to the police station and pick them up. I think they're five, they're $5 now. You can go uh, online and get them for $10, but yes, that will tell you exactly what happened and to make sure that the accident was your fault. Now, if you're, has your car been repaired at this point in time, Ann? No, as far as I know, they haven't even come and looked at my car and made an estimate on it. Okay, well, it might be a good idea to get a copy of the, uh, of the accident report so you know exactly what it is and you know who the uh, insurance company is but I'm sure your insurance company is already taking care of that and uh, they, you may be able to get a copy from your agent but I would definitely uh, have that for your records just so you can prove that the accident wasn't your fault because a lot of times insurance companies will raise your rates if uh, if the accident was your fault. Oh. Hmm. All right thank you so much for the call and best of luck to you and we're going to go to Nancy uh, calling from Jeffersonville. Hi Nancy. Morning Nancy. Hi. What can we do for you today? I am calling about car insurance on my car. Okay. And they are charging me right now $198 every six months. And all it is is just liability. Okay. Is that too much for liability? <laughs> it, uh, it depends on what type of uh, driving history you have, your age. Uh, that and also the amount of insurance. I would say at $30, $35 a month for liability, that sounds like a pretty good rate that you're getting. You may want to take a look at increasing your insurance to, uh, 
cover some other things other than just liability, Nancy, because there are a lot of people um, around today that are driving without insurance. If somebody hits you and the accident is, your, is their fault and they don't have insurance and you're injured in that accident, with the insurance coverage you have right now, you could not be compensated for your pain and suffering and uh, other damages that may occur from this accident. Also, you may not be able to get your car fixed. So I would ask your insurance agent about uh, uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage and make sure you have collision because the liability that only covers the person that you run into if you cause an accident it has nothing to do with you so you got a good price for what you have but I would look at increasing your coverage. Nancy thank you so much for the call we do appreciate it. It brings up another good point Mike and you, you were you mentioned earlier that it's, it's important sometimes to use a professional and when it comes to something like insurance, I mean, I, I trust my insurance agent implicitly, so I take her advice. And I, I think that um, it's important to have a good relationship with someone like your insurance agent so that you make sure that you're getting good advice. Absolutely. And you want to know the questions to ask. Um, I'll give you an instance, and I talk about that in my insurance book. Okay. Uh, my brother-in-law, um, he went to high school with his insurance agent, okay. and he thought he had you know, really good coverage, which he had above average coverage. He read my book. Oh. Okay, well actually it was the draft of the book because I wanted to see, you know, how somebody would uh, react to it that wasn't a lawyer, wasn't an insurance agent. He took the information from that book, asked questions to his insurance agent, ended up tripling his coverage, Whoa. and reduced the price of his premium. How do you manage to do that? <laughs> you just have to, you know, know, know the right questions to ask. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, the information is key in knowing what coverages are out there and what the different coverages are because most people think, okay, I have $25,000 worth of insurance, which is probably what Nancy had that called earlier, right. and that costs $200 every six months. Uh -huh. Well, if you raise that 10 times to 2500 you know, it would make sense that it would be now be, you know, almost $2,000 every six months for your, your insurance. But that's not the way it goes up. It right. would go up in smaller increments okay. because of the likelihood of damage. So her insurance may only go up to 275 every six months for raising it almost 10 times. Way up. Okay, I got it. Thank you so much for the calls. Interesting question. Let's go now to Tom calling from Danville, Kentucky. Hello, Tom. Morning, Tom. Hey, Tom, you with me? Well, a disconnect. Well, maybe. Maybe Tom had to hang up. Tom, if you're listening, you go ahead and give us a call back, okay? We're going to go up here to Terry now. Hey, Terry. Hi. Good morning. morning Good morning. Terry. I have a question about garnishment of wages. Um, I just found out last week that they were taking $195 out of my check, Ouch. and I had no idea why. Um, they never sent me a paper. I called the courthouse to find out, and they said I missed the court date, which I've never received any papers or never signed anything. What can I do to get them to stop my garnishment? Well, what you're going to have to do first off is find out why they're garnishing your wages. They have to have a judgment on you for something in order to garnish it. So you'll need to get a copy of the file that that garnishment is from and uh, review that, taken to an attorney, and then a motion would be made to, uh, to the court to uh, stop that garnishment. But the first step is to see what, the, what is in the file and then to see if there are grounds for that uh, garnishment to be stopped. All right, Terry, thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. We'll take a real quick break right now, but we do have open lines. We've got plenty of time to get your calls on. If you've got a question for Michael Schaefer, he's an attorney that and he can help you if you've got a question about being in an accident, 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. We'll be right back with Listen Live. Welcome back to Way Through Listen Live. Thanks so much for joining us today. Michael Schaefer is here, and we've got some open lines and plenty of time to get you on. If you have a question for Mr. Schaefer, 571-5263, we will go to Mary. Mary, 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 Mary is calling from Lexington, Indiana. Hi, Mary. Hello. How are uh, you? Fine, thank you. What can we do for you, Mary? Uh, yes, uh, I, if I have my car and I'm at a doctor's office or wherever I may be and somebody hits me or bangs into me, then uh, of course their insurance will get it fixed. But uh, what happens on my insurance then is that uh, I will be 
uh, counted as liable or else they'll put me down for so many accidents that I've had. Why is that when it wasn't my fault? Well, it just depends on your insurance company. As you said, some, some insurance companies will raise your rates based on accidents that were your fault. Others will raise your rates based on occurrences. They feel that you're putting yourself in situations where accidents cause, and it just depends on the insurance company. There's no real right or wrong reason or real reason why, why other than it's just business. They're looking to increase their profits, and as long as they treat everybody the same, they're allowed to do that. So, you know, it's just, you might want to look at a different insurance company that bases the increase in rates on accidents that war your fault, not just occurrences, is what I would do. Lots of insurance questions today. We're going to go to Terry now, calling from Louisville. Hi, Terry. Hi. Morning, Terry. Good morning. Uh, my question is, I was involved in an accident uh, a year ago this summer, and it was the other driver's fault. There was a police report done, and uh, he had no insurance. And my insurance company took care of the repairs, and they supposedly went after the suing, but I split them out my deductible. Is there anything I can do about that? Well, if the, Terry, if the, the accident was over a year, uh, the statute of limitations on the no insurance warrant, which is how I recommend to get the deductible back the quickest, uh, it's too late to do that. But you can uh, file a, a lawsuit in small claims court to uh, get that money back uh, from him, uh, for that de deductible back from him at this point in time. There would be a two-year statute of limitations on that, so you're still within that. You just want to make sure uh, if you were injured, you want to bring the property damage and the injury claim all at the same time because if you just bring the property damage claim without the injury claim, you could waive it. But you want to talk to your attorney about that and make sure that you uh, get that d property damage claim filed within two years because that's what the statute is on that. Okay, J uh, Terry, thank you very much for the call. We do appreciate it. Let's see if we can get Jane on real quick. Hey, Jane, do you have a quick question for Michael? Morning, uh, Jane. He, hello? What can we do for you? Uh, yes, uh, I was in a, a malpractice settlement, and I was wondering if uh, annuities is the way to go, or structured annuities, and, and if 10 years is fine or any longer or less or something else is better? It, it depends on what is best for your situation, Jane. Um, if you have an attorney, I would talk to him about that. What I advise is talking to uh, at least two different annuity companies and, and giving them different options as to what you want to use the money for. Because if you want to use this for ongoing living expenses where you would get $1,000 every month, you might want to go with a longer annuity. If there is something you're looking toward in the future, say 10 years down the road when maybe your daughter is getting married and you want a big lump sum settlement, that, that can be structured to, so you can get those uh, amounts. I had a client that set up his annuity uh, in a uh, wrongful death action where his son got was getting an uh, amount at the beginning of his freshman year of college, sophomore, junior, senior year of college to take care of his tuition and then he pushed it up 10 years after college when he thought he would be getting married and gave him another lump sum at that point in time. So you can structure it however you want to structure it. So I would talk to the annuity company and have them give you as many options as, uh, as they can and uh, just have them ask, ask you questions on what you want to do with that money. Wow, okay, thank you Jane very much for the call. We do appreciate it. Interesting, I didn't realize that you could go about getting those payments that way. Uh, a structured settlement can be uh, organized basically any way that's good, good for, uh, for the individual that's receiving hmm. the money. Okay. You, could, you could even take it, if you know you don't need any money for 20 years, you can just set it off and receive it in 20 years. Wow. So. Okay. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you weren't able to get on with us today, you can always call Mike Schaefer at his office on 7th Street, 584-9511, or go to 855-4-U-R-H-E-R-T, or the website is MikeSchaeferLaw.com. Thanks very much for coming in today, Mike. We really do appreciate it. Well, thank you.
Thanks for having me, Cindy. If I don't see you, have a Merry Christmas and a great holiday season. Thank you. See you tomorrow.